in this session let us discuss about the inverse of transform the inverse of transform can be solved in two ways one is long division method other one is partial fraction method first let us consider the long division method where we have considered an example they are given x of z as z minus 1 divided by z square minus 5z plus 6 here we have to find x of n using long division method for both causal and anti-causal sequence to understand the causal and anti-causal first let us consider causal sequence for causal sequence the division has to be considered in such a way that always you have to start the first term with higher polynomial value that is z square minus 5z plus 6 here the higher polynomial value is z square so we are started with that value in the numerator z is higher polynomial value we are started with that so let me proceed with the division process in order to get z z square has to multiply it with the value of z inverse so z square into z inverse you want to get as z minus 5z into z inverse you're going to get as minus 5 6 into z inverse you're going to get as 6z inverse now you're going to do the subtraction process z minus z it is 0 minus 1 minus of minus 5 it becomes plus 5 5 minus 1 becomes 4 0 minus 6z inverse you're going to get as minus 6z inverse next in order to get 4 z square has to multiply it with 4z to the power of minus 2 by which you're going to end up with 4 minus 5z into 4z to the power of minus 2 you're going to get as minus 20z to the power z inverse next 6 into 4 it is 24 z to the power of minus 2 again we are going to do the subtraction process 4 minus 4 is 0 minus into minus becomes plus 20 minus 6 it is 14 z inverse again 0 minus 24 z to the power of minus 2 you're going to get as minus 24 z to the power of minus 2 again in order to get 14 z inverse z square has to multiply it with the value of z square into 14 z to the power of minus 3 because z square into z to the power of minus 3 end up with z inverse so you are going to end up with 14z inverse minus 5z into 14z to the power of minus 3 you are going to get as minus 70z to the power of minus 2 6 into 14 it is 84z to the power of minus 3 again we are going to do subtraction 14z inverse minus 14z inverse it is 0 minus into minus becomes plus 70 minus 24 is 46 z to the power of minus 2 0 minus 84 it is minus 84 z to the power of minus 3 this division process keep on continue we can stop here here whatever the quotient part we got that is z inverse plus 4 z to the power of minus 2 plus 14 z to the power of minus 3 using this we can extract x of n as we know while doing your properties of roc we can easily get x of n from this that is x of n for this is given by there is no constant value so the the term attached to constant value is 0, the term attached with z inverse is 1, the term attached with z to the power of minus 2 is 4, the term attached with z to the power of minus 3 is 14. So 0, 1, 4, 14. So the z inverse the transform for x of z, given x of z, x of n is given by 0, 1, 4, 14. This can be represented as a signal itself. Next, for anti-causal sequence, first we are going to consider the lower polynomial value as the first term. That is, z square minus 5z plus 6 is written as 6 minus 5z plus z square. In the numerator, whatever z minus 1 is there, that is represented as minus 1 plus z. Next, let me proceed with division process. In order to get minus 1, 6 is multiplied with a value of minus 1 by 6. That end up with minus 1 minus 5z into minus 1 by 6 we are going to end up with 5z by 6 z square into minus 1 by 6 we are going to get as minus z square divided by 6 next let me proceed with subtraction by which we are going to end up with the equation z by 6 plus z square divided by 6 next in order to get z by 6 6 has to be multiplied with the value of z by 36 by which we are going to end up with 6 into z divided by 36 we are going to get as z by 6 minus 5z into z divided by 36 we are going to get as minus 5z square divided by 36 z square into z divided by 36 we are going to end up with z cube divided by 36 next if we subtract these two equations we are going to end up with 11z square divided by 36 minus z cube divided by 36 next in order to get 11z square divided by 36 6 has to multiply it with the value of minus 11z minus 11z square divided by 216 that end up with the equation 11z square divided by 36 plus 55z cube divided by 216 minus 11z to the power of 4 divided by 216. Next, if we subtract this two equation, that end up with minus 61z cube divided by 216 plus 11z to the power of 4 divided by 216. Now, we can stop this division process. Whatever the quotient we got, 
that quotient is represented so and so that is minus 1 by 6 plus z divided by 36 minus 11 z square divided by 216 this will be arranged in infinite duration left side sequence format that is first we are going to represent it as minus 11 z square divided by 216 plus z divided by 36 minus 1 by 6 now this can be represented over time domain that is x of n for this equation is given by at origin the value is given by minus 1 by 6 at z the value is 1 by 36 hence we are represented as 1 by 36 at z square the value is minus 11 by 216 so it is represented so and so so for anti-causal sequence x of n is given by minus 1 by 6 1 by 36 minus 11 by 216 this is a process. If you want further values, this division can be proceeded further way. Let us consider the second example where they are given x of z as z divided by z minus 1. Here you have to find x of n using long division method for both causal as well as anti-causal sequence. As we know, z divided by z minus 1 is the most common term used in z transform. Depending on the ROC condition, we are going to extract x of n. First, for a causal sequence, i a polynomial value as considered as the first value so according to which we have to divide z by z minus 1 so for the division process in order to get z z has to multiply it with the value of 1 so z into 1 you're going to get as z itself minus 1 into 1 you're going to get as minus 1 so if you do the subtraction process z minus z it is 0 0 minus of minus 1 it becomes plus 1 so here in order to get 1 z has to multiply it with z inverse so z into z inverse you're going to get as 1. So minus 1 into z inverse you're going to get as minus z inverse. Again if you do the subtraction, 1 minus 1 is 0. So 0 minus z inverse you're going to get as plus z inverse. So in order to get z inverse, again z has to multiply it with the value of z to the power of minus 2. So z into z to the power of minus 2 you're going to get as z inverse. So minus 1 into z to the power of minus 2 you're going to get as minus z to the power of minus 2. Again if you do the subtraction, z inverse minus z inverse you're going to get as 0 0 minus of minus it becomes plus z to the power of minus 2 this process keep on continuing now let us take the quotient part for the quotient part let me represent x of n as we know x of n where the constant is represented the value is 1 at z inverse the value is 1 at z to the power of minus 2 the value is 1 so we're getting 1 1 1 as we know x of n if all the values are 1 for the positive time positive time values it is given by u of n. So, z divided by z minus 1 for causal sequence, x of n is given by u of n. Next, for anti-causal sequence, we know that first term we are going to consider with lower polynomial value. The second value will be higher polynomial value. z minus 1 in which z is higher polynomial value, minus 1 is a lower polynomial value. Hence, we are going to start with lower polynomial value as a first term. In the numerator, only one term is available. Hence, you are going to represent z as it is. Now let me proceed with division aspect. As we know, in order to get z, minus 1 has to be multiplied with minus z. So minus 1 into minus z, you are going to get as plus z. z into minus z, you are going to get as minus z square. If you do with subtraction aspect, z minus z, it is 0. Minus into minus is plus, so you are going to get as z square. Next, in order to get z square, minus 1 has to be multiplied with minus z square. So if you multiply with it, you are going to end up with z square z into minus z square you're going to get as minus z cube if you proceed with subtraction z square minus z square is 0 minus to minus is plus so you're going to get as z cube next not to get z cube minus 1 has to multiply with minus z cube so by which you're going to get as plus z cube z into minus z cube you're going to get as minus z to the power of 4 again we do the subtraction aspect by which you end up with z to the power of more this process keep on continuing. We can stop here. We can take the quotient part. The quotient part we got as minus z, minus z square, minus z cube. This can be arranged because this is infinite duration left side sequence. That has been arranged accordingly. So first term it is minus z, minus z square, minus z cube. As we know the second property of ROC according to which we can represent x of n for this. So x of n is given by as there is no constant term we are represented with 0. At z, the value is minus 1, so you are represented with minus 1. At z square, the value is minus 1, you are represented with minus 1. At z cube, the value is minus 1, you are represented with minus 1. So, the signal is represented with infinite duration left side sequence 0, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. That is, if you represent that with the equation, you are going to get as minus of u of minus n minus 1. So, for the given term, 
z divided by z minus 1 for causal you are going to get as u of n for anti-causal you are going to get as minus of u of minus n minus 1.